Hello and welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Andy and today we're on location in Fremont, Ohio at the Rutherford B. Hayes Presidential Center. I want to say thank you to our patrons, the coffee grinders whose financial contribution make this kind of a trip possible. Today we're here doing an out of the vault episode. This is our chance on the Digest to go to a museum and give them the opportunity to pull some stuff out of storage that they don't normally get to show. It's not part of their normal collection for whatever reason, but it's still items of historical significance and give them a chance to talk about it. I'm here today with Kevin Moore, the curator of artifacts. Kevin, how are you doing? Good, how are you, Andy? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for having us here today. Uh, what do you have for us? Uh, so we pulled out three things for you today. Uh, the first one is a military co coat from uh, President Hayes. This is his uh, Brigadier General coat. Uh, the other thing we have is canteen. And then we also have a belt buckle. I guess let's start with the coat first. It's the big item here. Do you know when he got this coat? So he would have gotten this when he was promoted to uh, Brigadier General uh, very late in the war. And you can see on the top, it's got his uh, single star here. Uh, he was a colonel for the majority of the war. Uh, and towards the end, he was promoted to Brigadier General and then eventually a Brevet Major General. So where was this coat produced then? So on the back of the coat, on the back of the collar, it says T.W. Sprague and Company of Cincinnati, Ohio. So that indicates to us that Hayes would have had it made at some point while he was visiting home because uh, he and his wife Lucy and their family lived in Cincinnati at the time. What are some of the features of the coat? Uh, that, you know, some things that may not be uh, visible to the average person. On the inside, it's got some quilting here. Uh, it's not particularly thick or particularly heavy. It's a fairly light jacket, uh, but then it does have a, a belt on the inside. Uh, which is, uh, I've heard called a stability belt for riding. Interesting, prevent the coat from riding up on him yeah. while he's in the saddle. And, yeah. and you can see the, uh, the button groupings are the two rows across for Brigadier mm -hmm. General. Mm -hmm. And it is missing a couple, but we, I mean, we do have those buttons. All right. For the canteen here, uh, do you know when in his service he would have been carrying this? Uh, we don't have that information on specifically when he uh, acquired this canteen. He could have had it the entirety of the war uh, or at one specific point of it. He doesn't particularly say. Uh, it's a tin canteen. Uh, it is covered in, uh, in this greenish wool here. Well, it's interesting, too, because it's an it's a issue canteen. This is the kind that a, a private soldier would have carried during the war. It's interesting that as a colonel and then as a general, he's not carrying any kind of a, a private purchase canteen or any of the fancier filter canteens or something. He's still just carrying a private's canteen during the war. One thing that Hayes did uh, that does make it a little bit difficult sometimes to parse out what things are his specifically and what things he's collecting uh, is that he was a collector. He was a, um, they didn't really have a term for it yet, the word curator, but the, he does that. He sees the value of objects in history. And so he collects things all throughout the war. He does this later in life. Uh, and so he did collect mementos from the war, understanding that they are going to have historical value down the road. Sure. Um, so it is possible that this wasn't his. Um, we know that it was in his possession, but it is possible that it wasn't his during the service. You were saying Hayes is a collector. Um, did that lead to anything later down the road? Yeah, that's a, a lifelong fascination uh, for him. And it is something that he carries down the road. Later, after the Civil War uh, and after his presidency, he will become the commander in chief of uh, the Loyal Legion of Mullis. Uh, and it's during his tenure that uh, the first Civil War Museum is created in Philadelphia in 1888, where uh, they uh, contacted all these veterans to have them submit some of their belongings and their mementos from the war, put them together in one museum to preserve their history of artifacts uh, for the public. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, belt buckle here. Yeah, uh, we have a belt buckle here. You know, you'll notice it's got the eagle on it right here, an eagle and shield. There are initials on it elsewhere, B.F. Scott. Uh, not exactly certain who that may apply to. If it belongs to Hayes, it could have belonged to one of the few jackets that we do have. Not particularly certain on that. Um, but that's another piece that we have from our collection. It's not normally on display. What about these items made you want to pull them out today so that we could look at them? 
So we have a jacket of President Hayes's that's always on display, and it's the jacket that he was wearing uh, during the Battle of South Mountain in which he got wounded. And it's very visible because it's torn up on the back sleeve. It's got a bullet hole in it, uh, and it tells the story of some of his injuries. This one doesn't go on display normally in preference for that other jacket, but we like to bring it out occasionally for different things because it shows uh, one of his other uniforms, it shows his rank, it shows him moving his way up, proving his leadership, getting promoted. Um, so I think it's a, a good piece, even though it doesn't see the light of day all the time. It, it's a good illustration of his Civil War career. All right. It certainly shows where he ends up after four years as a citizen soldier. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time today to show us this grouping of items from Rutherford B. Hayes. It's really fantastic to get this close to a piece of presidential history. Well, seeing these items is a good reminder of the journey a lot of soldiers made during the war. You know, Hayes started out as a major, ends as a brevet major general, and goes on to be president of the United States after the war. As always, I hope you made a connection to the items that are here and learned a little bit more about them. For Civil War Digital Digest, I'm Andy, and we'll catch you next time.